As we celebrate dads this Father's Day weekend, there is a push in our nation's capital to reimagine a father's role at home and at work. You may remember seeing this earlier this year as House Republicans fought amongst themselves to name a speaker. California Congressman Jimmy Gomez went viral, not for how he voted, but for who he brought along for the historic ride. His infant son, Hodge, literally got to hang out on the House floor. A few weeks later, Congressman Gomez announced the creation of the Dad's Caucus, this panel of pops fighting not only for who tells the better dad joke, but for serious issues working families face, like affordable child care and paid family leave. I sat down with members of the Dad's Caucus, Congressman Jimmy Gomez, Morgan McGarvey, Kevin Mullen, and Brendan Boyle, to learn how being a father has changed their approach to legislating. And full disclosure, my brother is a member of the Dad's Caucus. I would argue that there is a moment in the life of every parent where you realize as a parent that the choices you're going to make as an individual are not enough, that you're operating within multiple systems. You're operating within a healthcare system. Sometimes you're operating within an immigration system. Sometimes you're operating within a child care system, a system that in this country has been called a broken market. And I think until you have those moments, sometimes you don't realize the way that our lives and the choices our government makes intersect with the way that we're able to parent. For each of you, what was a moment where as a parent, you realize that your own grit and determination and love was just not going to be enough. Shortly after the birth of our twins, uh, I was serving in the state legislature in California with Jimmy, the founder of the Dad's Caucus, and uh, pretty much pulling my hair out and, and um, doing the drive uh, back and forth. This was after I had certainly uh, some time at home with the newborns, but when I tried to uh, start doing my commute back and forth to Sacramento again, just the realization of the challenges of working parents, it really lands on you. But we had the benefit of having uh, my mother-in-law to help with these two twins when I was on the road doing political stuff. So many people don't have that benefit. So uh, it was a wake-up call for me, just that it became very real. For me, it's interesting. It was really right after um, my wife gave birth to my, uh, our son, Hodge, um, she ended up being, um, having blurry vision, high blood pressure, so we had to take her back to the hospital. She had um, postpartum preeclampsia. And that, women often, that die, often like 40% die after childbirth. And we, had, we couldn't bring Hodge back into the hospital. We had to leave him with my mother. We're, and we we're lucky that she was there. So the system is very good at like, oh, we're going to treat the mothers up until they give birth. But they don't really give that much help when it comes to that, what they call that fourth trimester. So then that was one of the, like, what happens if, you know, we had help? What happens if you don't have help? You're going to take the, your, your son or your daughter back into the hospital? How long do you have to be there? What happens if something, God forbid, happens to your spouse? So um, those, I think that's when I realized that some of this stuff is out of our, our control. Our twins, our first two, were born 14 weeks premature. And so we're born weighing a pound and a half and a pound and 15 ounces each. Spent a long time in the, uh, the NICU, the neonative intensive care, intensive care unit. And we're fighting for our kids in the NICU and just fighting and fighting and fighting. And literally, that's part of the reason I ran for office the first time in the state Senate. Is right after they were born, we were able to get them home from the hospital. I ran for the state senate. My first year, we passed an insurance mandate so that Medicaid and insurance companies in Kentucky would cover this type of life-saving care for babies. Because, like you said, it's that, that first realization that, that what you have might not be enough, and it's a policy reason. So we decided to do every big uh, life event all at exactly the same time. So uh, we had our daughter just while I was running for Congress a couple months before my election. After I won... Uh, here we have, you know, at that point, a nine-month-old. And for my wife, who's an elementary school teacher, once we priced out child care, we realized we couldn't afford it. So my wife actually stayed home for the first four years because, you know, now she wanted to stay home as well and looked at that as, as a lot of advantages to that. But frankly, once we calculated salary versus what child care costs, it was a pretty obvious decision. So then years later, when we were debating and, and writing... Uh, part of legislation that passed the House but didn't pass the Senate, expanded child care. I told that story and that there are so many uh, families that are really impacted by this. It's one thing to know about something as an issue, 
It's another thing to have a lived experience of it. Congressman Gomez, make the argument to me for why we need a dad's caucus. Well, we need to step up on these issues. Um, we need to lend our voices. Uh, unfortunately, for a variety of reasons, women want run later in life. Um, they often don't have, um, if they don't have kids, uh, because they don't think that they can do, do both. And, and, and we don't have a very friendly institution. There's more dads serving in Congress now with kids under six than women. There's more dads serving in Congress now with kids under 16. And we need to add our voices to the, to the fight that women have been waging on paid family leave, child care, the child, uh, uh, the child tax credit. We need to step up and, and do our part. Because if it's not a whole family approach, people are going to always say, that's just for women. That's just for kids. They're not going to see it's about the family, about our economy. It's about our communities. Um, so the Dad's Caucus is, is stepping up. But it's, in the end, it's not about viral moments. It's not about, oh, look at that dad taking care of their kid, because women do that every single day. It's about pushing real policies and real results. Now it's time for the fun portion of this interview. <laughs> We're going to do a, a, a rapid response here. <laughs> Who is the disciplinarian in each of your families? That's an easy one. It's, <laughs> it's my wife. I know as the pushover. Um, I think we're all my daughter pushover. Abby will go to me when she has to ask for certain things she wants, and I may say yes, and then find out that I contradicted a decision that had been made. Always on the same page, Congressman Boyle. That is rule number one. We have to uh, get our messaging uh, in alignment. So I've now learned: ask your mother. That's the best response. Definitely uh, my wife. <laughs> See, I was, was going to give a slightly different answer. I mean, because, you know, look, my wife is an absolutely amazing woman. She works full-time outside the home. We have three small kids. I mean, she is just an incredible person. On the disciplinary front, though, I would say we kind of do it jointly. Um, because, I mean, look, it's by necessity. One thing we've You're learned is you work, <laughs> we're outnumbered, and you can't let them divide and conquer, right? They can't have a weak front and a strong front. So, I mean, we really try to support each other in that way out of necessity. I mean, she's, she's awesome. I think on the discipline side, it really is kind of a joint effort. I'm going to bring up the other thing that mothers often are the ones who carry, and that is the mental load, the sort of tick-tock of when camps need to be registered for and who needs, who has a half a day and what needs to be picked up at the grocery store in each of your lives, who is it that is carrying the mental load? No question. Just, I mean, no question about it. The, during the week, I don't know how my <laughs> wife does it. She works full time um, juggling these twins, somehow keeps it all together and is so much more organized than I am. So, I mean, she is the rock. Uh, she's the sort of hub and we're all the spokes. But I feel the burden, absolutely not burdens, maybe not the right word, or maybe it is. But when I'm home Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday morning, I take more of that load uh, to try to ease that burden on her, at least during the weekend. But that is the, that is the hardest part, is the juggling that. Your kids are different ages, so you may or may not understand this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Is Bluey the best show on television? My son would say Miss Rachel. My kids are obsessed with Paw Patrol. So they <laughs> can't really see anything beyond Paw Patrol right now. So I'll get back to you on Bluey. It's, it's Bluey. So we're, we're into Bluey, but also into Mira right now. Mira is a big one. Mira the detective. Um, and so lots of things are, are being used as a magnifying glass and detective notebooks around oh, the house. Cool.